Pacey for a Joint Standing Committee report on electoral matters. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. On behalf of the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, I present the committee's report incorporating dissenting reports together with a corrigendum to the report on the conduct of the 2013 federal election and matters related thereto. And I ask leave of the House to make a short statement in connection with the report. Is leave granted? Leave is, leave is granted. The member for Casey <coughs> has the call. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The loss of 1,370 Senate votes in Western Australia at the 2013 federal election was the greatest failure in the history of the Australian Electoral Commission. It was caused by multiple failures at multiple levels within the AEC. The consequences included the necessity for a rerun election at a cost of over $21 million and unprecedented damage to the reputation of and confidence in the Electoral Commission. Deputy Speaker, this report outlines the failings that contributed to the loss of votes. It assesses in detail the reforms that have already been or are in the process of being implemented within the AEC to rectify the failings and, critically, it makes a number of unanimous recommendations for further reforms aimed at delivering a more competent, accountable AEC in which Australians can have a high degree of confidence. The committee has closely monitored and analysed the actions of the AEC in response to the Kelty report. This together, with an, this, together with an important body of audit work undertaken by the Australian National Audit Office and a range of issues raised in submissions, public hearings, site visits and private briefings, has been the committee's focus since it commenced its inquiry in December of 2013. The committee acknowledges the work already undertaken by the AEC. Nevertheless, we have identified a number of areas where we believe further changes are necessary, including the accountability of state manager positions, the development of key performance indicators for senior service delivery staff and the commencement of a corporate culture leadership and performance measurement reform program. The recommendations for these important additional reforms are unanimous. If these recommendations, together with the other critical reforms that comprise new electoral commissioner Mr Tom Rogers' plan are fully implemented and the AEC as an organisation comprehends and supports rather than resists the necessary changes, the committee believes there is a high probability that in the years ahead the disastrous events of 2013 will be seen as a turning point. This must be the AEC's positive ambition to embrace reform and to undertake it in order to create the best electoral administration possible and regain the confidence of the Australian people. If this is achieved, in the future the 2013 federal election will be seen as a catalyst that shattered carelessness and complacency and put professionalism and accountability front and centre within the AEC. Mr Rogers has consistently and candidly acknowledged the failures and the reasons for them. The committee has found Mr Rogers to be open, committed to major reform and determined to lead the required transformation within the AEC. But, Deputy Speaker, the government majority strongly believes that further measures are necessary to ensure the integrity of and public confidence in our electoral system. Australians deserve to know that the electoral roll is as accurate as it can be and those entitled to vote only vote once. The government majority recommends that the automatic enrolment provisions be amended to require confirmation by the individual that the information is accurate before they can be added to the roll or their details updated. The majority also recommends that voter identification requirements be introduced for the next federal election to help reduce multiple voting. At present, our system of voting is essentially a trust-based system. If a voter is prepared to be dishonest, there is nothing to stop them voting at other polling locations within an electoral division on the day, either in their own name or in another elector's name. With voter, with voter identification, it is obviously much harder to vote in someone else's name. For those who would seek to vote multiple times in their own name at different locations, voter identification is a major disincentive and an additional hurdle for voters to seek to vote more than once. The identification is provided and the traditional defence that a second or subsequent vote must have been cast by another person is diluted. Deputy Speaker, I want to place on record my thanks to the permanent members of the committee 
during the course of the inquiry. And I make particular mention of the member for Brand and the member for Moore who are here in the chamber this afternoon. I particularly want to thank the deputy chair, the member for Bruce, Mr Griffin, for his cooperation and hard work on a range of difficult and complex issues. We've worked together with the committee to reach agreement on a number of recommendations for critical electoral reform. We haven't, in this report, agreed on every issue, as I have indicated, and we have some major differences of opinion on those issues. But, Deputy Speaker, let me say that our disagreements have been at all times civil and professional, as you'd expect from the Premier Committee of the Parliament. <laughs> I would like to thank all of the staff of the Secretariat for their valuable work, particularly Committee Secretaries Glenn Worthington and Nicholas Horn and all the staff who travelled directly and worked directly with committee members Siobhan Lean, Rebecca Gordon, Jeff Norris, who was seconded from the AEC, and James Bunce. They have all provided a high level of support to the committee and their work is greatly appreciated. In the coming weeks, I will advise the House on the committee's further work priorities for the year. I no, thank the member for KCS.